In this tutorial, we'll focus on some alternative mask inputs to Fusion's standard effect mask input. The effect mask is available on most tools. The mask input you're about to work with is only available on a couple of tools. Let's begin by adding a text plus tool to the flow. Right click on the flow, add tools, creator, text plus. With the text tool selected, go to the controls and enter the word fusion in the text box within the controls. View the text tool in one of the display views. Increase the size of the text until it encompasses most of the image. Now, switch to the Text Plus Tools Shading tab. Scroll down and locate the color control. Open the color wheel and set the color of the text to yellow. Add a glow effect. This time, let's add the tool through Fusion's Add Tool script. Press Control Spacebar. This opens up the Add Tool script and type in the letters G L O W. This filters the tools and now you can select the Enter key which adds the Glow tool to the composition and it connects it to the selected tool which in this case is a Text Plus tool. If your Text Plus tool was not selected prior to adding the Glow tool, you'll have to manually connect it to the Glow. Drag the Glow Effect node into the display view. Alternatively, press the number 1 key which also loads the left viewport. Take a look at the Glow Tools controls and increase the Glow Size and Glow Strength with the sliders until you see something that looks like the glow that you see here. This applies a very strong glow to our text. What we would like to do is use a rectangle mask to isolate the glow to cover just one of the letters. Have a look at the bottom of the display view and note the toolbar that you find here. There are several toolbar buttons that are related to masks. As you hover your mouse over each one, you can see what kind of mask they're related to. The first is a polygon mask. The second is a B-spline. The third, a bitmap. A paint mask. A wand. A rectangle. And a lips. Click on the rectangle mask button to automatically add the mask to the selected tool. Select the rectangle mask and adjust its size and control and position it covering the letter F. View the rectangle mask in the second viewport. This can be achieved by selecting number 2 on the keyboard. The mask is applied to the glow after the glow has been processed. What that means is that the glow renders across the entire image and then the white portions of the mask are used as a window through which we can see the glow. The remainder of the mask, the portion that is black, we see just the original input of the tool. However, note how hard the edges of our mask. If we zoom into the image by holding down the left and middle mouse button and click dragging, we can see how hard the edge is chopping away at our glow. If we pass through or bypass the rectangle by using Control P on the keyboard, we see the original glow and the result after the masking. There is a second type of mask available called a pre-mask. A pre-mask works by applying the mask first and determining which pixels will receive the effect. Note on the glow tool there's a second free input in gray. This is the glow mask. Disconnect the rectangle mask from the effect mask or the blue effect mask input and reconnect it to the gray input on the glow tool. Now notice the difference in the image. The glow is now applied to all the pixels in the F and the glow can extend beyond the edges of the rectangle mask if necessary. The rectangle mask no longer chops off the glow. Fusion tools that contain pre-masks are listed in the description below. This concludes our brief tutorial on alternative mask inputs. Our next video will cover effect masks in much more detail, going into specific details on polygon and B-spline effect masks.
As always, for the most up-to-date descriptions and details on Fusion, visit manual.vfxpedia.com. <laughs>